Today we will start Lecture 2-3 on Stability Analysis, Ralph Hurwitz Criterion. The objective is to define the terms stable, unstable, and marginally stable given a control system, and to create a Ralph table to determine the stability of a closed loop system. We will also apply the Ralph Hurwitz Criterion to determine if a system is stable. Stability is extremely important for control system design. A feedback control system cannot be designed to regulate to a set value or track to a set point without stability. Bible stability means that for every bounded input to a system, the output remains bounded with increasing time. A system is asymptotically stable based upon the following criteria. It is stable if all of its characteristic modes go to zero as t goes to infinity. It is marginally stable if all of its characteristic modes are bounded as t goes to infinity, and it is unstable if any of its characteristic modes is unbounded as t goes to infinity. In other words, all of the poles of the transfer function must be in the open left half plane or have negative real parts in order for the system to be stable. The Ralph Hurwitz criterion is used to determine the stability for a closed loop system and is based upon the characteristic equation of the transfer function. The first step is to create a Ralph table using the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. Next, apply the Ralph criterion by determining the number of sign changes in the first column of the table. The number of sign changes represents the number of poles of the transfer function or roots of the characteristic equation in the right half plane of the S plane. There are three different conditions for the Ralph table. No zeros in the first column, a zero in the first column but other non-zero elements in the row, or a full row of zeros. When one of these special conditions happen, you create the Ralph table for the following characteristic equation, delta of s is equal to a sub n s to the n plus a sub n minus 1 s to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 a1s plus a0. List all of the descending powers of s down to s to the 0 in the first column. The first row is the coefficients of the odd number terms, and the second row is the coefficients of the even number terms. So here's what the table looks like. The first row is s to the n, so it has the coefficients a n, a n minus 2, a n minus 4, a n minus 6. The next row is s to the n minus 1, so it has a n minus 1, a n minus 3, a n minus 5, and so on. The remainder of the rows are found by using the following formulas. So if you want to find B1, it is negative times, think about it like a determinant, a n times a n 3 minus a n minus 1 times a n minus 2 divided by a n minus 1. So B2 would be negative a n times a n minus 5 minus a n minus 1 times a n minus 4 over a n minus 1. And b3 would be a n times a n minus 7 minus a n minus 1 times a n minus 6 divided by a n minus 1. So now if we go to the next row, to find c1, c1 would be a n minus 1 times b2 minus b1 times a n minus 3 divided by b1. Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern, but we'll do D1 just in case. So D1 would be negative B1 times C2 minus C1 times B2 divided by C1. And D2 would be B1 times C3 minus C1 times B3 over C1. If there are any missing values in the rows, then zero should be added to pad the row. Now to the special cases. What if there's a zero in the first column but the other non-zero elements in the row, or what if you have a row of zeros? If there's a zero in the first column but other non-zero elements in the row, sometimes in order to handle this situation, replace the zero with a small number epsilon, and at the end let epsilon approach zero, and then check sign changes in the first column to determine the number of poles in the right-hand plane. An alternate approach is to solving this type of situation is to apply the Ralph Hurwitz criterion to a polynomial that has the reciprocal roots of delta of s. The polynomial should have the roots distributed to the same right half plane and left half plane and imaginary axis. 
Special case two if you have a row of zeros. This indicates that you have a purely even polynomial and it is a factor of the characteristic polynomial. An even polynomial has roots that are either symmetric and real, symmetric and purely imaginary, or symmetrical and complex. The row before the zeros contains the even polynomial that is the factor of the characteristic equation. Everything from the row containing the even polynomial down to the end of the Ralph table is a test of the roots of this polynomial. This polynomial is the auxiliary polynomial and it is necessary to take the derivative of the auxiliary polynomial and use the coefficients to replace the row of zeros to finish the analysis. And special notes. If any coefficients a sub i of the characteristic polynomial is equal to zero, then not all of the roots are in the left half plane, so you can just use that instead of creating a Ralph table. Or if any coefficient of ai of the characteristic polynomial is negative, then at least one root is, root is in the right half plane. And once again, you don't need to do the Ralph table. You already know your answer. Okay, let's do an example. For the following system, use the Ralph Hurwitz criterion to determine the range of k values of k in order for the system to be, a, to be stable. Assume that k must be greater than zero. So the first thing we're going to do is to find the closed loop transfer function, t of s. is equal to y of s over r of s, which equals k over s to the fourth plus 3s cubed plus 3s squared plus 2s plus k. So now the first row, we're going to put the odd coefficient. So that's going to be 1, 3, and k. The second row, we're going to put the even coefficient. So that's going to be 3 and 2. And for the next row, we're going to calculate b1. b1 is equal to negative 1, 3, 3, 2. divide it by 3. So this is going to be negative 2 minus 9 over 3. So B1 is equal to 7 thirds. B2 is going to equal negative 1K3. And there's no term here, so that would be a 0 divided by 3. So this is going to be, and this is going to be 3k over 3, which is k. And we're going to put this here. And now we're going to do c1. c1 is equal to negative 3, 2, 7 thirds k divided by 7 thirds. And this equals negative 9 sevenths k plus 2. And we're going to put this here. C2 is equal to negative 3, 0, 7 third zero because we're going to put a zero here divided by seven thirds and this equals zero so we're going to put a zero here and finally we're going to find d1 d1 is equal to negative seven thirds k negative 9 sevenths k plus 2, 0, divided by negative 9 sevenths k plus 2, which equals k. And we put k here. So now that we have the first column completed, we are now going to check for stability. So we know that we can't have any sign changes. So from here to here is positive, from here to here is positive. 
So we need negative 9 sevenths K plus 2 to be greater than 0. And we also need K to be greater than 0. So if I solve this inequality for K, I get negative 9 sevenths K is greater than negative 2. So K must be less than 14 ninths. And from here, K must be greater than 0. So the range of K, in order for the system to be stable, is that K must be between 0 and 14 ninths.